Hi everybody, it's uh, Mr. Stewart here with the assignment video for the WAVE Part 2. Um, so, uh, we, we're starting off exactly where we were um, uh, last week. And, uh, and normally I would go through, um, you know, maybe how to adjust or change. I went through that with the, the bouncing ball, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that um, not because it's not important, but because I'm going to try to, to go through a couple of different things that are going to take some time. So normally the first thing you would do in this rough form is to, uh, to go back in uh, like we did, you know, maybe say this section here is too fast or uh, it isn't big enough or, uh, you know, maybe I want to stretch this more. And I'd go back in uh, to, to these sections I would uh, delete this, I would redraw, I would reanimate, and make those adjustments. And that's a normal part of the process. Now, uh, as I said, for, for this week, I'm not gonna do that simply because I'm gonna try to do uh, a couple of different things. So the, the first thing that I'm going to, to do, the first way that I'm going to approach this is sort of what we would call a, a tie down in the old school uh, version. Um, this is one, perfectly uh, reasonable and a logical way to, uh, to move forward from here. Um, this is going to be, uh, in the way that I present these, I, I've talked a little bit about this in other, in other videos, but this is going to be, we'll, we'll call this old school tie down and, um, and add that. So, um, in some ways, this is going to feel real simple to some people. In other ways, uh, for other people, this is going to feel like, oh my goodness, this takes forever. Um, and uh, But uh, then the other thing that we're going to talk about later is, uh, is creating, uh, starting to get into the, the world of rigs. Um, and, so, and so for the opposite people, uh, some people are going to think that's fantastic. And, and some people are going to uh, feel like that that is uh, very limiting. So, uh, so I want to pre present both ways as valid ways to move forward. Now, uh, if you remember, we still have our keys circled, which is really helpful so we can find out which are our keys. And that's the first thing we're going to do with the tie down is we're going to tie down our keys. I'm going to go to my original drawing here and I'm going to add a transparency. Um, and I'm gonna really amp up uh, that transparency. Oh, let's go to 85. Okay, so here you go. So we, we have this transparency. And now I'm gonna to go to my uh, tie down. I'm gonna use the, the pencil. Again, because the pencil is easier to control my, my line. Um, and I'm going to begin drawing around like this. Okay. Now I could leave it there. You can see that it's, it's a bit, um, kind of wobbly and I don't want that wobbliness. Um, I want to, um, I want to get rid of, of that. So the first thing I can do is to go in uh, and grab some points and begin simplifying um, this uh, curve. Now that initially is going to um, that initially is going to make it feel a, a, a bit wobbly, but I can go in and begin to adjust the. Uh, let, me, let me get rid of that one. I can adjust the uh, the curve uh, by moving these handles around. And this takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but uh, it, it has a lot of really nice control. And very quickly, uh, I have my uh, I have my head uh, shape in there. Uh, then I'm going to go in and kind of do the same thing for my, and I'm going to make sure I'm getting everything off the screen. Oops, wrong, wrong button. 
Um, now, I can also draw through uh, the hand there, and I can go up to my uh, select tool, and I'm gonna go to cutter. And I'm just gonna go kind of cut that out and delete it. So that's, a, that's an easy way I can uh, kind of go back in over parts And uh, and at all times I can I could use my eraser uh, if I wanted to clean things up um, I could go back in here um, and uh, move some of these around to give myself a little more of the type of shape. Uh, that I want um, and oops that's not what I wanted cutter there take off that neck um, so there's there's lots of different ways I can uh, work uh, to try and clean uh, clean this up um, All right, so um, I'm going to keep doing this for my major key poses. Now, this brings up a good point, which is, do you have to do this? Because when I say old school tie down, this is old school cleanup. Um, I'm really getting super, super clean. So clean that if I took off this, it, it, it would feel uh, very clean. So another way to do this would be, um, let me go to kind of pull this down a bit. Let me get rid of the center line smoothing. And, uh, and I could just kind of quickly sketch a much cleaner line. Now, as long as I make sure that all of my lines are closed, I could probably still use color effectively. Now, this is really a little bit more when I say old school tie down. This is really a little bit more what old school tie down really looks like. Um, much more like a, uh, a pencil sketch. Um, and it's a little bit bigger. Wow, that's terrible. It's better the first time. Um, okay, so um, if I were to take off my color card here and I wanted to go in and fill this in with the paint bucket, I could do this at this point. Um, I can't do that because I didn't close off the bottom. So let me go back and close off the bottom here like this. And now, whoops, uh, now I can go back and add in Um, all of these. Now you can see when it's sketchy like this, it takes a little bit more time. Um, but I can still get that uh, uh, filled in like that, and it's still going to be cleaner than uh, my sketch. So if I were to uh, want to do some sort of combination of all of this, the, the first thing I would do would be to go in and find all of my different keys and, uh, and begin doing this. Um, and, uh, oops.
and begin kind of tying down my drawings. Now, I'm going to kind of stick with the old school uh, tie down uh, approach, uh, which is just more about drawings. And if that's the case, I, I, I could still use the um, I could still use the uh, paintbrush uh, if I wanted to, um, and. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I like the, the look of the paintbrush a little bit better. Um, I can go in and erase. So this would just be very much like uh, using paper and pencil. Um, and... And very quickly going in to to do a a little bit more um, purposeful approach. Now, is it that much different than the tie down? Uh, it is in the sense that I'm going to get a a more finished line. But can I use some of those drawings if I wanted to? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, with the head, it, this comes into a, a, a preference. Um, I'm trying to give you a, a lot of um, exposure to a lot of the different tools um, and what those tools can do. Um, but it's going to take some practice with all of you to practice, well, what is it that I, I do well? What is it that I like? What is the look that I'm uh, approaching? You know, and with the, the head here, um, let me come back to the selection tool. I, I don't really love what I did here. Um, so I might go and say, okay, well, for this, I think I will use the pencil. I will use the center line smoothing. Um, that was terrible. Um, now, as you could tell, I clean up was not something that I was uh, very good at. Um, I did much more of the uh, rough animation. Um, but I do, uh, I do like this uh, functionality of the handles uh, to be able to, um, oh, I can't get in there, hold on, tell you what, let me just get rid of that one and do this with the handles here. Um, so, uh, you know, going in, um, you, there might be a, a mix of, um, of how you want to, uh, how you want to, uh, to do this. Um, so that you can really kind of get a, uh, a cleaner version and you can go back in. Um, but in terms of, it, it, you know, going back, I, I started off with, is this necessary? No, it is not necessary. Um, if you want to keep um, everything at this level, uh, right here where you started with, and just keep it at this, this kind of roughness, that is perfectly fine. You can do your adjustments and uh, and keep everything uh, the way you have it, and that'll be perfectly fine uh, in terms of a, an approach. Okay, so um, 
going back to kind of finishing um, finishing this approach, what I would do at this point would be um, to to go in and kind of finish everything out. Okay, something. Whenever you click on uh, the uh, an object with the um, paint paint bucket and it won't fill, uh, then it means that something is uh, is open um, and it would fill up the whole screen and it doesn't want to do that. So um, so you have to kind of go back in and uh, determine. Well, th there does seem to be a a hole somewhere. Um, so I can really quickly begin to uh, kind of shore up uh, where it might feel like uh, the paint would be getting out. Um, in terms of that, I feel like that, that does pretty good. So I can go back, see if that works. It's still not working. So somewhere I have a, a hole. This is, um, you know, I can go in here and look, and it looks like it might be right there. Uh, so now, nope, it seems like it's right there. So, so this could be a bit of a process too. Cleanup is never, um, I think one of the things that sometimes uh, can uh, frustrate uh, people about cleanup is that cleanup was it is a long process. Uh, it was it's never meant uh, to be uh, a short process, um, and uh, there is all of this, especially with digital. Uh, there is all of this that goes along uh, with it, um, where you know there's a bit of a discovery um, that is happening. Uh, to, to make sure that all of your drawings are closed. You know, and sometimes it just means you're not gonna find it, you're just gonna have to maybe kind of go back over the whole drawing. Now, I really like the sort of rough, sketchy uh, look um, it especially if the uh, the forms feel really solid. So that to me isn't a, a horrible thing. There we go. I finally got it somewhere. Um, but it, for some people, it's really frustrating because they want that super clean line. Uh, you know, like I I started here. Um, to me, that feels a little more stale. Uh, than something that has a, th this kind of energy. In fact, my tendency is to say, oh, I need to go back over here and, and get some, uh, some more energy uh, around uh, the head here. So if you want to go through all of this, if you want to go through and basically you would start with the, uh, the keys, um, you would... Uh, then uh, go back in, uh, very much like what we did last week, and uh, begin going through the in-between process. Um, you know, and I would go in here, turn on the light box, um, and be able to see, uh, you know, all of this. Now, this is where it, it can get um, very, very important. Uh, that uh, I'm putting in a line uh, in the exact right spot. And this uh, is, you know, where, like a lot of times students will talk to me and be frustrated that, um, that the, the line is wiggling uh, a lot. And uh, so, let me see if I can do this uh, quickly. So I'm going to draw a new layer. I'm going to turn everything off um, uh, and just concentrate on this new layer. So if I was to do kind of a single line like this, and then on frame uh, 10, I would do a line like this. 
And now, um, the, the, the in-between for this needs to go in a specific spot. If I did, you know, that, well, now, let me fill up the empty cells here. Um, and exposure, fill, empty cells, there we go. Um, so now, if I take this off, you can see that the animation is going to be kind of off. It, it's not going to be precise. So a lot of times people aren't really checking. They're just sort of drawing the drawing and drawing the next drawing and drawing the, the next drawing. But in animation, precision becomes super, super important. Um, I just undid the fill selection so I can still have, uh, still have this uh, opportunity here. Um, so it, in continuing in the sort of the, the wrong approach, if you will, um, I would just sort of do a drawing uh, that would be there, and then maybe a drawing like this. And now this is going to give me, and fill empty cells. This is going to give me a lot of wiggle. And so a lot of times I'll see student work like this, and students will be like, well, can you help me? Um, they're, they're seeing that they've got a clean line, um, but the animation just doesn't feel, it just feels wiggly and it, and it doesn't feel right. So uh, let me go back here and delete these and start over again. So this all starts with looking at these first two. Now I've got to make sure that and let's say, uh, let's say I'm favoring. I'm going to be a little bit close, uh, which isn't quite right. There we go. I'm going to be a little closer to the, the green, the, the second. And now as I go back in, well now I'm going to favor the red. And you can see I am trying to be extremely precise uh, in my approach to where these lines go. And this is how cleanup was done. I mean, it wasn't done with these little handles, but if they had the handles, they would have used them. Um, the uh, precision is super important to make sure that the, the line is looking like it is the exact same line. Uh, now I'm gonna go in here and draw in this line like this. So now, when I fill all these cells in, um, and exposure, fill empty cells, turn off my, um, turn off my uh, light box, turn off my uh, onion skinning. Now you can see that the line is very precise and moving very smoothly. Now, if you imagine that that's just the side of the character and there's another side here and there's a head and there's a arm and there's all these other things, you realize how many lines that you have to be very, very careful uh, about where they are. And that level of precision becomes really important. Um, so uh, if I go back to my in between here, turn on my onion skin, um, I think this is where I was. Um, now you can see that it gets a lot more important to, to be uh, completely accurate. So I can see the red. The red's where I was coming from. The green is where I'm going to. And I can see on this particular line, I'm just going to concentrate on the back end of the line. Now, right now, the drawing is right there. So if I just copy the drawing, kind of like that, even if I do it pretty sketchy. Well, um, the reality is that, uh, um, take that off. I'm in the wrong spot. It's going to do, it, it, it's going to, and let me show you this here. Um, okay. 
it's going to push forward. You can see if I'm just looking at this line right here, this one right, right along there, that pushes in a forward direction like that. And then it's going to push back. So I have put it in the wrong spot. So I've got to make sure um, that um, and it's a test. Wait, there we go. Um, that's really, uh, really, really bright. Um, oh, here, that's what I want to do. I want to get rid of those exposures. There we go. Um, I want to make sure that I'm uh, keeping the line uh, consistent. So I can do the neck. The body is going to begin to pull backwards. Now I'm favoring, so, um, so that's okay. I'm working on the hand. So I can favor towards the red. Um, so it takes some it takes some practice because it's really easy to just think, okay, I'm just going to start drawing the red, or wait, no, I'm drawing the green. Uh, I'm not drawing either one. I'm drawing uh, in between uh, the two of them. And this is another reason why if you want to tie down in a, in a pretty rough form like this, this was pretty normal. So when we turned in work at, at Disney on paper and pencil, uh, my work would very much uh, easily look like this. But as long as you could really identify all of the different forms um, and the shapes, then that was okay because then there was a whole other department that was going to do uh, the um, that was going to do the cleanup uh, part of the process, the the actual clean drawings that ended up on screen. And I think I've said this before, but they would take on average about half an hour for one drawing. Now you can see uh, the amount of drawings we have. Um, that is that's very tricky. Now how did they do that? They did that because there was there was a lot of them working on a single scene. So if I worked on one uh, scene in Tarzan, then uh, it might have a crew of six, seven, sometimes even uh, up to 10 or 15 people doing all of the drawing. So some would do the keys, then they would hand those off to assistants and those people would do breakdowns, uh, which is what I'm doing in between the keys. And then they would hand off those to other people to do the in-between. So lots of people would do these cleanup drawings. It was a, a team effort. So a, a lot of students put a lot of pressure on themselves that somehow they're supposed to take their student work and turn it into this clean, finished, you know, version of, um, you know, what they see on the screen. And that's just not the case. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of work uh, to do that. And there are... You know, there are new tools that, that help, and, you know, we're going through some of those right now. But, um, but if you turned in something that looked uh, like this, um, that would be uh, perfectly fine. Um, and get through all of this. Um, and, and if you turned in something that looked like what we did in week one, that would be perfectly fine too. Okay, so um, obviously, as I've just been saying, uh, it would take me uh, hours uh, to to go through and and clean all of this up. Um, now, if it, this was my um, if this was my animation, that would be my responsibility to to do that, and I'm perfectly fine uh, doing that. Um, but for a moment, what I'm going to do, and you can see, you know, how it, it, it'll get easier 
if I go in here and um, and just uh, begin, I say it'll get easier. Um, the uh, I have the transparency on. I do. Okay. Um, you know, to go in and and just kind of work out. Oh, I've got the paintbrush. Um, to just kind of work out the the head shape in between the the green and the red. Now, I think I can go into preferences here. Um, drawing light table enable shade. I think if I turn this off. Um, I could say color outline um, and hit OK. And there we go. Um, that is sometimes easier to take off the paint. Um, so if you go into preferences, uh, you go into drawing, you have some options here. Original colors, colored, it, colored outline, um, and uh, some different uh, things you can do. So, uh, so that can, can be helpful in uh, figuring out, okay, so I need to get my line right here um, and, and continuing to, uh, to go through all of this. Um, okay, so uh, that's one way to approach this. And uh, and that is um, that is the uh, the kind of the, the my preferred way. That's the, the way that if I was going to do this, this is how I would do it. Um, and, but it, for those who who really do want a clean line, and we, we kind of did this uh, with peg animation uh, with the bouncing ball. I'm going to sort of expand on that and show you kind of how all of those uh, different. Uh, things can work. So, uh, let me uh, turn off the old school tie down. Let me get rid of uh, the, um, the test layer there. Um, just pull that down, get it out of the way. And now, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start uh, creating uh, a rig. Um, I'm going to create a rig, um, and uh, this will be an adventure uh, because this is not necessarily uh, what I am uh, super good at, as I've said. But I'm going to create a rig um, that is um, that is going to um, be something we can animate and move along uh, with the rough drawings that we've done. So the first thing we're going to do though, is we need to do this from a, uh, a sort of typical default, uh, uh, spot. Uh, and this is a pretty good frame to do that. He's standing straight up and down. Um, and, uh, and so, um, we're going to, uh, kind of start here and, uh, there, we're going to be creating a lot of different layers. Um, so the first layer I will create will be uh, the body. Uh, and I'll say body drawing. Because um, I'm going to want to be uh, pretty descriptive in my, uh, in my language. Uh, because it's going to be helpful uh, to have all of that. So then I'm going to say head drawing. Uh, and add. Uh, I'm going to say uh, left uh, upper arm. Add. I'm going to say uh, left lower arm. Add. I'm going to say left. Uh, let me do the right upper and right lower arm too, because I'm going to need to do that. And I'll organize these here in a minute. But you can see that what I'm doing is I am creating um, a layer for every piece 
of the um, uh, every piece of the uh, character. Uh, and that's a pretty good uh, approach for now. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the individual body parts on the different levels. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pretty rough with this because I'm going to try to move through this quickly. But you can spend some real time on this and really add in a lot of detail to these different body parts if you want. Um, because this is going to be helpful uh, for you... Um, uh, to uh, you know, as you move through and, and do the animation. So I'm going to start with the pencil. I'm going to do a black outline. I'm working on the body level, and I'm going to do this uh, in this spot where it's uh, the character is, is pretty stationary and standing straight up and down. And that's important um, because. Uh, Uh, that's important because uh, the character uh, is going to need to be able to, to be posed in a lot of different uh, different um, oops. There we go. Uh, in a lot of different poses. Um, and it's going to be helpful to do that if the, uh, the, if the pose is uh, somewhat uh, generic. Uh, in its approach. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do the um, the uh, left upper arm. So I want to make sure I, I get the left upper arm. Uh, if I'm looking at this, this is my left, so that would be the screen left upper arm, but that's actually the character's right upper arm. So instead, I'm going to go over here, since it's actually the character's left arm, because it's looking at me the you know it's looking at me and everything's reversed I'm going to go in and, and do the um, the left upper arm here now as I said I'm going to keep everything pretty uh, rough in its approach uh, and as such uh, you'll see that um, you know you could go back in and uh, and do this uh, a little bit better in fact if you wanted to uh, to do this uh, in without that black outline and you just wanted to do it with a um, with a blue outline it would blend uh, a little bit better now instead of keeping it round like that I want to try to make myself make it as sort of uh, straight as possible um, and uh, so now I'm going to do the lower left arm. And I'm going to try to line those up so that... Oh, I didn't get a good... I didn't get a good... Uh, there we go. Line that up so that everything... Uh, looks good. Um, I'm going to uh, kind of scroll up here and I'll do the same thing with the upper and uh, lower arms of the right arm. And let's do this. Oops. Switch back to the pencil. And put in that and then uh, go to the lower arm and like this. Now, as you can see, um, this is looking a little bit different than my um, than my uh, character uh, drawing, and that's okay. Um, what I'm doing is I'm I'm doing a very uh, very rudimentary um, uh, approach to building a rig. Um, now uh, and uh, and we'll see how this goes because I am not in any uh, sort a rigger. 
But I can go back in and I can turn off some of these pieces uh, so that I can see a little more clearly um, the, uh, the hand. Now, the hand is going to have, uh, I think, if all goes as planned, uh, multiple positions. Um, I want to make sure I turn on the, uh, the lower arm there so I can see it. Um, but uh, I'm going to draw the hand and close this off here. Um, there. Okay. And for the moment, that will be perfectly fine for my hand. Um, now, but you're like, well, it doesn't quite look right. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, and, and that's okay. Uh, I can move this right hand um, and move it underneath the uh, lower arm like this, and now it'll uh, line up the way it's supposed to. And we'll, we'll reorganize all of those things uh, in a moment here. Uh, now let me do the, uh, the, um, the left hand. And again, I'm, I'm not really going to worry too much uh, about making all of these super pretty uh, because uh, just for the uh, time uh, constraints that we have here. But if you wanted to really go in and make each of these uh, you know, really, really nice, then that would be... Um, now, it wouldn't be wasted time because uh, you'd be able to uh, really see let me get the body back here. Uh, you'd be able to see these on screen for, uh, for a, a pretty uh, good amount of time. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back to the, um, to the body level and draw in the neck. Um, and that's the wrong tool. Now, why do I want the neck on the body level? Uh, because this is one of those things, you could create your own neck rig if we wanted to, but it gets a little complicated. I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible. Um, so I tell you what, in, in the nature of, you, you'd have to make a decision. Where am I gonna put the neck? Am I gonna put it with the head or with the body? Um, and I could put it either, I guess, is my approach. Do I want the uh, neck uh, to sort of move along with the, the head, or do I want it to move along with the body? And I'll, I'll choose the head for simplicity's sake uh, at this moment. Um, and uh, let me create that. Kind of move this down here underneath. Uh, and then put that in, uh, hold off. I'm gonna hold off on that for a moment and go back and draw the rest of the head in. Um, get the right. Now rigging, uh, as I said, this is kind of what we're doing in a very rough way. Uh, rigging is its own art form. Uh, it's actually its own job in the studios. Now, not always in Toon Boom, and I, I'm not as, as uh, versed in the way rigs are used in 2D. Um, but, uh, but rigging uh, is certainly uh, something that... Um, that sure I don't I'm use the cutter instead. Let me just cut that. Get those pieces off. Okay. Um, and then fill this in. Fill that in. Okay. And let me get that one. Whoops. There. 
right in there. Okay, so at this point, I'd probably want to save my file um, because I want to uh, make sure that uh, I, I keep my, my rig uh, together. All right, so now I, I need to start building and, uh, and creating um, my, my rig. And this is gonna take uh, a little time and it's going to um, uh, be a little complicated. Uh, so I'm gonna want a little bit more uh, room down here at the bottom to look at my layer. Okay, so I have, I have all of my drawings. Um, now I could make pegs and I could um, uh, go into deformations and bones. There's all sorts of things. I'm gonna try to keep this pretty simple uh, because uh, it, it can get overwhelming very quickly. Um, and, uh, and, and there's a lot of flexibility to be able to then add on but let's, uh, let's do this the simplest way possible. Now, uh, you can see I've, I've lined up a bunch of uh, different, um, uh, a bunch of different uh, drawing layers here. And I created a new one. I created one I called Master Body. Now, there is actually nothing in Master Body. Uh, I have not drawn anything on it. It's just going to be a blank layer, but I'm gonna go ahead and expose it um, and uh, fill in the empty cells there. Um, and uh, I'm going to start to arrange my body layers um, in a uh, what we call a hierarchy now. So uh, that means that some are going to sort of have a control over others. And the master body is going to be uh, at the top. So I'm gonna drag that one up to the top. Now, right underneath that is going to be the body uh, layer. Now, it, it, when I say underneath, uh, right now, the body layer is completely independent of the master layer. If I want to move the master layer around, um, then it's not going to affect the body at all. Um, but I, and if I want to move the body layer around, it's not going to affect anything else uh, other than uh, itself at all. Let me come back to this, this frame. Um, so uh, I need to start uh, creating the hierarchy, and the way I can do this is to click and drag right over the top of that layer. So I'm gonna click and drag the body layer and drop it right on top of the master body layer. So you can see that this has now uh, moved the, uh, the uh, words over and it's created this little line. And now, if I move the master uh, body layer, you can see I've got that selected, it is moving the body as well. But I can still move the body. But uh, I'm gonna do the rest and it'll make more sense. So the body is going to control the head. I'm gonna, map, I'm gonna drag the head drawing right over the body and you can see the same thing happens there. Then I'm going to uh, do the arm. So I'm going to say the upper arm over, not the head, but the, the body as, uh, still. And then the lower arm is going to be controlled by the upper arm, and the hand is going to be controlled by the lower arm. And this is what we call the hierarchy. It's starting to uh, take shape here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the left arm and put that on the body then uh, the lower arm onto the upper arm and the hand onto the lower arm. Now it'll take, it'll take a minute to get sort of caught up. Um, but you can see now if I grab the body layer uh, and I move this or I rotate this, it is going to rotate um, uh, the same way uh, you know, all of the pieces are going to rotate and I can move that pivot point around. I have to do that every time, which is a bit of a pain, but I think for simplicity's sake, there are ways to sort of move around that, but for simplicity's sake for today, I think this will be uh, the best option is just to, you know, keep that, moving that pivot point uh, to where you want it. Now, if I were to then click on the upper arm, and move the pivot point uh, to the upper arm, 
uh, now it is going to move the entire arm, but only the arm. Um, and you can see that it's starting to set uh, keyframes. And now I can start to go in and line this up with my rough animation. So that's what I'm going to start to do. I'm going to go back uh, to my frames here. And um, I'm going to uh, turn on the light box. Is that going to work? I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, but I'm going to start to uh, create a keyframe uh, for all of these different uh, positions. And I can even scale this out. Um, if I wanted to uh, create uh, a bit of a rotation for all of these different pieces, I can do that. And I think that's a pretty good idea to do, to get a little bit of movement uh, on uh, every, uh, every uh, piece. Now you can see that I'm creating a, a keyframe uh, by this little dot that shows up on the uh, layer. And that's good. I want to see that dot because um, if I don't, uh, it can make things uh, a little bit, um, uh, it can make things a little bit uh, confusing later on. So then I would move along the time frame and, uh, and I will move out to this point because this is where it, it's sort of just uh, rotating forward. And again, I have to move that pivot point, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, I think it's still worthwhile. And you can see that now the, uh, the animation is, is starting uh, to happen on the rig. And I, for, for my purposes at first, I wanna make sure that um, I am I am keeping everything, uh, if I'm going to make a keyframe, you know, so for here I'm on frame 10, if I'm going to make a keyframe on frame 10 um, for one piece, I probably want to make a keyframe for every piece. Um, it's a, whoops, um, it's a much easier way to keep track of the animation when that is, uh, that is happening. And so I'm just going down the list. Now you'll see I actually didn't do this on the head. Um, and so I should go back and I should set a keyframe on the head. Um, and come over here and set a keyframe like this. So now you can see I'm starting to get movement on my entire uh, body. Um, now, um, then I would go through and, uh, and you know, for a lot of these things, this is going to be uh, kind of a, an easy way to, uh, to do this is just to line this up. But for some things, it's gonna be a little bit harder, like so when he closes his eyes. So how do I fix that? How do I do that? So let's first off get the rig uh, at, in the closest position we can uh, to, um, to the uh, movement. So, whoops, I didn't set the pivot point uh, to where I want it to be. I can scale this down, move this over. Uh, let me come down to the head drawing and move this over here. Maybe squash it, stretch it out. Maybe move it down just a bit. Um, try to line that up. Um, and I'll, I'll do the rest of the hands uh, here quickly as well. And maybe 
little squash and stretch there. Maybe I want to move that up. Um, and then the lower arm, make that pivot. And then the lower hand. And then this up. Whoops. I always have to come back over here and you kind of get everything ready. And then grab that. And you'll notice that sometimes it the animation might take a little bit different shape uh, in terms of placement. And and that's okay. Uh, it, it, it's not, you know, you're not tied to the, uh, the movement completely. Uh, but you don't want to get too far off because uh, you can kind of get into a, uh, a little bit of uh, trouble. But uh, I want to close my eyes uh, here. I want the, the eyes to close and maybe I want the, the face uh, to, uh, to be a little bit different here. So how do I do that? So if I go to my head drawing uh, layer and I'm going to say, okay, on this frame uh, through uh, this frame, I want uh, this to be, uh, have my eyes closed. So I can uh, right click and I can go up here to exposure and I can insert a blank cell. Now what this does is it deletes my drawing. But you can see over here with my drawing substitutions that my drawing is not gone. Um, and it comes back. Um, but in this place, now I can just draw a new drawing. So if I go to the pencil, uh, and I turn on my um, my uh, onion skins here, and I can see uh, where that's coming, uh, where that's going, um, and I I can just uh, go in and begin to draw a new drawing where my eyes are closed. Now. Um, the, the trick here, and let me undo for a minute, if I just went in and I just started to erase uh, like this, um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase it for every single thing. You can see my drawing substitution has changed, and now uh, I have ruined everything. So I, I have to go through that process of creating um, a, uh, an empty cell, uh, or an, yeah, in, in exposure, uh, insert a blank cell. Now I can go over here and select the, uh, entire head and I can copy it, uh, control C and I can paste it uh, control um, uh, V and now if I want to go in here and just erase certain things um, then uh, I can do that uh, and and redraw in some eyes that are closed And then put in the uh, white again. Can get that in there. Let me squeeze in there. Um, okay. Kind of fill in all of those gaps. Um, so now, uh, and if I were to then uh, fill that empty exposure. Um, and uh, fill empty cells there. Now you can see that he blinks. There is a new uh, drawing substitution that's put in there. So at any point, if I want to go in and change the animation, and you can see that even when he closes his eyes, they are still sort of moving. Um, 
I can go in and uh, and uh, and do that um, to uh, to add in. You know, if I wanted to, when I started to do this wave, I could do that as well. I could uh, I could go in and add all of those pieces when the hand opens up and I want it to be uh, a completely new hand like this. Well, all I have to do is go to the hand layer um, and uh, and insert a new um, insert a blank cell, or uh, I could just uh, begin drawing a new layer. So here, let me let me do this um, to where I have a hand that's open like this, and I'm going to first off. Uh, Go through and do my my uh, body animation. Kind of put the uh, character where I want. Uh, grab this hand and move this over here. Pull back. Um, and let me. Whoops. Gotta put that pivot point uh, where I want it. Uh, kind of get it to come back to the. Normal position and check to make sure everything seems fine. Um, and rotate that just a little bit. Um, go to the head here, put the pivot point where I want it, rotate. Um, and you can see this can get a little tricky and maybe I, I do want uh, to draw a new drawing uh, in that spot. Um, and that this gives me the freedom to do both. I can, I can line it up. Um, I can uh, put in a, oops, that was the upper arm, not the lower arm. <laughs> it could be, you know, just like every uh, style of animation, uh, it could be a little bit frustrating. Um, and it certainly is going to take some practice to get things that you are super happy with. But now, um, if I put this arm up here, put the lower arm up here and kind of pull that out a little bit. Uh, and now you're looking at the hand going, well, oh my goodness. Um, that is uh, very, very strange. Um, I'm going to put the hand, I am going to go in and say, uh, I'm going to put, kind of line the hand up as best I can. Here. But now uh, on the hand, I'm just going to go in and start drawing. I'm going to I'm going to grab um, a uh, the pencil, and I'm going to go in to um, exposure and um, insert add key exposure. Let's see what add key exposure. Yeah, does that do it? Um, it does change it, and so now if I grab this, it doesn't create a a new uh, drawing substitution though. So I don't think that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, let's go with the uh, the first way and say um, clear exposure. And, uh, let's do clear exposure. Okay, so maybe that's what I was looking for. So. Uh, add key exposure, and then if I go to clear exposure, it'll clear it out. And now I can draw a new uh, drawing. And I can draw this drawing based on my, um, based on the animation I did from uh, last week. And I can draw a new, uh, new hand. 
uh, I can put in uh, the white there. And now it will, uh, if I go here, um, and set exposure, fill empty cells. Uh, now, and this is where it gets a little funky. Um, so, um, oh gosh. Um, I think part of that is the scale, uh, but uh, it's a process. Um, and uh, to go in and, and be able to say, there are going to be times when the, the rig is going to work really well. And then there are going to be times when the rig is not going to work well. And it's probably going to be easier for me to either redraw this completely um, or uh, just go in to, in fact, let me see if I get rid of the, I don't want to get rid of the, um, yeah, I'm not sure. But I could go in and say, okay, I can reline this back up. Uh, now, I, I, in some ways, I'm kind of glad that this has happened because um, I would be lying if I said that, you know, in Polar Express uh, or in, uh, you know, different uh, films that I've worked on, that this doesn't happen. This happens all the time. And we just kind of do this uh, to... Uh, to pull it back around. Um, is it the cleanest way? Not at all. But does it happen? On every single uh, picture that you've seen, uh, this has happened. This kind of thing where it just doesn't seem like it's working at all. And yet we uh, somehow can, can fix it. Um, so you can. Uh, I don't find it uh, there, there being anything wrong with uh, doing this and uh, kind of relining everything up as uh, you go here and then picking and choosing because at this point uh, I, I have had you know a, sort of a, a redraw approach uh, that I would go to in uh, the in the first place so uh, to go in and, and kind of redraw the hand, redraw the, uh, the different pieces. You know, for the time being, I'm just going to kind of really quickly fix it. Um, and I'm going to move this around just to get a, a new keyframe. And upper arm. Kind of get that all in the right spot. And get the hands and move this around. So uh, then that last one kind of goes back in. So now you can see I get this uh, nice movement. And um, and so this is going to feel uh, a little bit uh, different in, in terms of a way to clean it up. But but as I said, it is a valid way. Uh, you can see the. It gets a little warped here, and you can always go back in and redraw. Um, uh, and and this would be a, a nice way to uh, to approach it if um, it's something that appeals to you. So hopefully that is not so super confusing that uh, you are uh, pulling your hair out. But even then, uh, I would be lying if I said I wasn't pulling my hair out on half of uh, a movie like The Polar Express or Surf's Up. Um, the computer creates all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of challenges all at the same time. And if you just watched through this and said, I'll go back and draw, that's perfectly fine too. That is not giving up. That is just, there are different styles. Uh, there's all sorts of different approaches. Some people like different approaches, some people like others. And I just want to make sure that all of you can understand and sort of see what the different approaches are. So you would finish this up, you would export out your, um, your video, uh, just like you have in, in previous weeks. Um, and, uh, and then 
uh, turn in that video. Uh, make sure you turn it in on time because we want to make sure it's on time so we can have it uh, edited into the student showcase. So good luck and have a great week.